What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Here are 10 things that'll make you fail a plumbing inspection, whether you did the work yourself or if you hired a contractor to do it. So here we go. The first violation would be to plumb your washing machine drain in inch and a half piping. The new plumbing code specifies that a washing machine P-trap and pipes must be a minimum of 2 inches as opposed to the old code which was an inch and a half. Also, the standpipe must be 18 to 30 inches in height and at least 6 to 18 inches off of the floor for it to be code. If not done this way, you'd fail automatically. The second reason why you'd fail an inspection would be that there are no drill plates or protection plates. These protection plates are specifically designed to protect all pipes during drywall installation. Failing to install these would increase the risk of a drywaller accidentally drilling into a drain pipe or potable water line without knowing and cause water damage in the future, which would lead to mold and rot. So always install them before calling your inspector. The third violation would be to use a sanitary T or TY on a horizontal drain line. Sanitary T's are only meant to be used in a vertical orientation for drains and both vertically or horizontally for vents. As we could see here, a sanitary T was used horizontally on the main drain to plumb a toilet rough in. Yes, it would still work, but for an inspector, this is an automatic fail and would need to be modified using a Y and 45 like this for it to be code. The reason being is that there's a lot less resistance in this setup than with a sanitary T, which would prevent eventual blockages in the future. Violation number 4 is not installing a cleanout on a main stack. For an installation to be up to code, a Y or two-way approved cleanout is required on any main stack that comes out of a slab. If you just use a straight coupling as seen here, your inspector will automatically make you fail an inspection and get you to modify it so it's done right. Something else to keep in mind is to keep it as accessible as possible so it's easy for a plumber to snake the pipes when the time comes. The fifth violation is roughing in a toilet drain too close to a wall. A toilet rough-in must have at least 15 inches of clearance on each side from the center of the flange to the finished wall. Anything under this is a code violation and will need to be modified. Also, 95% of toilets must have their flanges installed 12 inches away from the finished wall to the center of the flange. Check your toilet's instructions for these measurements. The sixth violation is setting up a dual lavatory rough-in like this. The reason why this configuration is not code is because of the way the left lavatory is plumbed. Let me show you why. When a sink drains, water flows through the pipe. If the pipe fills up with water, it'll create a negative pressure behind it and suck out the water out of the P-trap, allowing for sewer gases to escape into the house. By using a double TY like this, Air from the vent is allowed into the pipe to balance out the pressure. A variant of this violation is sloping your pipe more than a quarter inch per foot. Your pipe should never drop more than its inner diameter. So a 2 inch pipe should drop no more than 2 inches or it'll siphon out the P-trap. Number 7 is plumbing a vent below the flood level of a fixture. All vents must be tied in 6 inches above any fixture or 42 inches off the ground for it to be code. Here's why. Let's say you have a kitchen sink with a vent tied in 6 inches below the flood level. In the event of a blockage, the sewage would rise and fill up the vent instead of leaking out of the sink, giving you no visual hint that your pipes is blocked. This could eventually cause your vents to block, and if that happens, there's no way of unblocking them which would result in permanent damage and all sorts of other problems. So always install your vents 6 inches above the highest fixture or a minimum of 42 inches off the ground to be code. If you're adding a fixture in the basement for example, you might be lucky and have what we call a future vent that was plumbed during the construction of the home, which is code to connect to. 
One thing you don't want to do, and that's against the code, is to connect your new fixture to an existing vent if that's all you had. This would be an automatic fail. Number 8 is installing a T with a capped pipe like this to absorb any banging in the pipes. Before, plumbers used this method to stop pipes from banging in the walls by installing a 18 inch piece of pipe on both the hot and cold lines, which would, upon filling, trap some air inside and act as a cushion to dampen any shocks caused by quick closing faucets such as toilets, washing machines and ice makers. These air chambers would eventually fill up with water and be rendered useless, which is why this technique is no longer approved and has been replaced by these dedicated shock absorbers which do the same job. Number 9 is using a short sweep nanny on a drain. A lot of people will make this mistake when doing their own plumbing, and that's using a short sweep 90 instead of a long sweep 90 or 245s. Short sweep 90s like these are made for venting, not draining. They're too restrictive for drains, which is why there aren't code. You either have to use 245s or a long sweep 90 for it to be approved by your inspector. The only place a short sweep 90 is permitted is for a toilet. If a long sweep 90 was used, the pipe would go below the joist and wouldn't allow you to install any drywall if that was the case. And the tenth violation is notching or drilling too big of a hole in a joist to pass a pipe. There are strict guidelines to follow when notching and drilling holes in a structure and they must be respected in order to keep the building structural integrity. If you're only drilling small holes to pass some PEX piping for example, there are no problems, but for bigger holes such as a 3 inch pipe for a toilet, it's a whole other story. Here's a schematic that shows what's allowed and what's not. A lot of people will choose to run the pipes below the joists, but would mean that a box would need to be made to have a finished wall. And that's it. 10 points that'll make you fail an inspection if not done properly. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions and give this video a thumbs up if you learned something from it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.